Sally Yates is a woman of courage. As a career prosecutor, she has stood up to elected officials, drug cartels, sex traffickers, to the Centennial Olympic Park bomber, Eric Rudolph, and four American values. Yates spent 27 years with the Department of Justice and was appointed by President Barack Obama as both United States Attorney for the Northern District of Georgia and later as United States Deputy Attorney General, the second highest ranking position in the Justice Department. During Yates swearing in as U.S. Attorney for the Northern District of Georgia, then U.S. Attorney General Eric Holder referred to her as a steel magnolia. Her work as acting attorney general ended abruptly when she was fired by President Trump after she instructed Justice Department attorneys not to defend his executive order banning travel into the United States from seven predominantly Muslim countries because she concluded the order was unlawful. Her decision to consider the constitutionality of the travel ban was later affirmed by the two Federal Circuit Courts of Appeal. Speaking to Harvard Law students, she urged them to be bold, to take risks, and resist the urge to be safe. Sally Yates is deeply rooted in Georgia and gives back in major ways to the community. She is married to Comer Yates, executive director of the Atlanta Speech School, and they are the parents of two young adults. Sally Yates currently serves as distinguished lecturer from government at Georgetown University Law School. Sally Yates stands on truth and walks in integrity. And for this, the Islamic Speakers Bureau of Atlanta recognizes Sally Yates with the 2017 Courage Award. Well, thank you. First, uh, Akil and Heba, I want to thank you for what the two of you do every day in our legal system to protect individual rights. And I want to thank all of you here, my friends at ISB. I got to tell you, it is good to be home. <laughs> Um, now, I know Sumaya didn't want any individual attention, but since that rule has long since been broken, I think that I can say a couple of words about Sumaya as well. Um, I first got to know Sumaya back when I was in the U.S. Attorney's Office here in Atlanta, and she worked with our office, worked with John Horn, who succeeded me as U.S. Attorney here, um, and was so generous with her time with us. She spent time educating us, and, and building relationships for us here with, with the Muslim community. And in fact, I know many of you because of the introductions and relationships that Sumaya helped me to build. I marveled then and I marvel now at Sumaya's boundless energy and her talent and her spirit. And we are all grateful to you, Sumaya, for the bridges that you have built. I feel particularly privileged to be here tonight with your other honorees, Arthur Blank and Dr. Bizarra and Bishop Wright. In fact, Bishop Wright is my bishop, as a matter of fact. Does this count as church when I heard you here this evening? Does this count for tomorrow, maybe? Or <laughs> you know, I couldn't agree with you all more that these leaders of our community have really demonstrated through their entire lives their commitment to understanding and respect and inclusion, the principles that really undergird the ISB. I am so honored and humbled by your recognition tonight. You really have no idea how much this means to me. As you heard, for 27 years, I, I was privileged to be part of an institution that's dedicated to representing the people of the United States all the people of the United States. And representing the people by upholding the Constitution and the rule of law. 
At the core of those laws and our Constitution is the founding principle of equality, that we all have the same rights and that regardless of race or nationality or religion, that those rights are protected equally. Now, while this is central to the creation of our country, from the beginning, we have struggled to fulfill that promise. When our founding documents were, were penned, declaring that all men are created equal, we enslaved hundreds of thousands of African Americans. Not so long ago, all across the Jim Crow South, our country's definition was threatened by lynchings and burning buses of freedom riders and the disenfranchisement of, of non-white voters. Our history is littered by the presence of individuals and factions who have tried to exploit our imperfections. But our history is more powerfully marked by those whose vigilance toward a more perfect union has prevailed. That vigilance is evident today. All across our country, people are speaking up and they're acting, acting to protect our core promise of religious freedom, that core promise that is inextricably intertwined with who we are and who we want to be as Americans. They're speaking up to lay bare the use of pretext to facilitate religious discrimination. And they are acting to reject the use of scare tactics to try to rationalize a violation of our constitutional guarantees. Just think about it for a minute. Think about the thousands of people who streamed to the airports after the travel ban was announced, who streamed there to, to protest. And think about all the lawyers from all across the country who similarly flooded the airports to represent individuals and stayed there for days on end. The vast majority of these people were not individually impacted by the travel ban, but yet they were called to act because they believed that this ban was such a violation of our core values. You know, I think about a letter that I received from a young couple on the West Coast who had gone to the airport after the travel ban was stayed and people were coming back into the country. And they sent me a photo of their little boy who couldn't have been more than two. He was tiny. And he was holding this big sign up that said, immigrants and refugees welcome. And they wrote me and said that, that they brought him to the airport and they had the sign because they wanted the people coming off of those planes to know who we are as a country. And they wanted their little boy to grow up knowing who we are as a country. That is the promise of America. And that's the promise we have to continually seek to try to fulfill. The arc of the moral universe bends towards justice, but it doesn't bend on its own. So thank you for this incredibly generous recognition here tonight. And thank you for what ISB and each and every one of you do every day to make our country a bit more of that perfect union. Thank you.